Hello guys and welcome to this video with me Coach Reese. I hope you're all doing really well. So in today's video we're going to build on from the video around the half spaces and we're going to take a look at the way Pep Guardiola zones his pitch. As always I will leave timestamps and chapters below. Let's get started. So at the moment on our pitch we've got the more commonly used five vertical zones. We've got the wide zones, we've got the half space and we've got the central zone. So Guardiola's way of zoning the pitch builds on from this and it splits them into smaller zones. So what we end up with is we end up with 20 zones in total with 10 in each half. And why does Guardiola split the pitch in such a way? Well he chooses to split the pitch in such a way to support his playing philosophy which is built around positional play. So within this zoning system, there are two fundamental rules. The first is that there are no more than three players on the same horizontal line. And the second is there are no more than two players on the same vertical line. So to help us visualize that, let's bring in the 4-3-3 formation. We're going to leave the goalkeeper out of this just at the moment. So we're only going to use the outfield players. In its default shape, the 4-3-3 doesn't necessarily fit these ideas. But if we move players around slightly, we can fit them in the rules of no more than two players on the same vertical line and no more than three on the same horizontal line. So as we slightly move players around, what we begin to notice is we can see that the team move into almost a 2-3-5 shape. And this is a common shape that we see associated with teams who use positional play. So what's the main advantage of players being positioned in such a way? Well, by positioning players in such a way, once we introduce all the potential passing options, we can see that each player has multiple passing options available. And more importantly with this, they have multiple progressive passing options. So a player can be on the ball and can have at least two or three options that will take the ball forward. In order to still maximise the disruption that we cause to an opposition's defensive structure, rotations and movement is still really important. But as we've discussed, players should still be trying to maintain a shape that fits these rules. So for example, if our right winger moves infield into the half space, we now have three players on the same vertical line. And as we've discussed, this doesn't fit those rules. So what we will need to see is we will need to see our central midfielder move out wide. And what may happen with this is, is our right winger moves infield, they may engage a defender and take them with them, that then opens up space out wide for our now central midfielder to exploit. And this can really help the team disrupt the structure of an opposition's block. These little movements all over the pitch are really important. And what we see from Guardiola's teams is we see that all the players will be really comfortable in these different areas of the pitch. And this allows these movements to be really effective. Because the central zone is the widest zone, there is a little bit of flexibility within it. So we may see more than two players in the same vertical line within the central zone. Because in theory, we could actually split this zone into two. And this would help the team maintain those rules of having no more than two players on the same vertical line. So that's an overview of how Guardiola zones his pitch and why he zones his pitch and the benefits that it can have on the team. I do have a Kofi page if you'd like to support me in the channel. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I've been Coach Reese. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.